All right, new this evening, we've been following a story for you, a live five investigation, if you will, into one downtown Charleston business. A sign has been put up to comply with the code. That sign now clearly shows that that business is either a timeshare or a vacation club, but as of last week, that was not the case. Blair Sable joining us here now live. So Blair, how did you find out about the law requiring that that sign be there? Yeah, well, Ann and Roth, you might remember that we had an investigation last year into this downtown Charleston business vacation inspirations LLC. Now there were dozens of complaints filed with the state and a former customer. She actually saw that story and she reached out to us. Now her name is Rosita Lacey and she says she got her full refund after a year of back and forth with the business even at one point threatening to picket them about some former settlements they're connected to in other states, which we've also reported on. Now in doing some of her own research, she found that they were supposed to have signs up per city code and she says for the past six years she contacted everyone she could think of to get those signs up and according to city code, vacation club and timeshare businesses are supposed to be clearly readable to the public and state the business's name, the type of business it is, and that there is no affiliation with the city of Charleston. Director of Tourism and Livability Dan Riccio, who we also spoke to for the story, told us the ordinance came about because in the past businesses of these types have been mimicking official tourism centers to lure in customers. Now there is only one official location with the approval of the city of Charleston and that that is the Charleston Visitor Center at 375 Meeting Street near the Charleston Museum. It was my husband's birthday in April of 2017, and my husband thought that it was the Chamber of Commerce. And so we went into the place and found out when we were in there that it wasn't, but they had all these flyers and everything that made it look, look that way, and there were no signs in the window stating otherwise. And uh, so because of that, um, we listened to what they had to say. Now, this law has been on the books since 2011, and in asking questions about this, plus an in-person visit to the location at 229 Meeting Street, we have learned the business self-reported the missing signs. We'll have more about how we got to this point, why the business says they weren't up when we checked on it. That's all coming up tonight at 7. For now, for Live 5 Investigates, I'm Blair Sable.